Welcome to Love Notes Revisited, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Today's devotion revisits a reflection on the Psalms first shared in 2022. The Psalms are among the most treasured devotional writings in the Bible. The Church has returned to them over and over again to strengthen faith, provide hope, comfort, and a word of grace. Today, our psalm is psalm number one. It begins, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the paths that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Uh, happy here doesn't mean uh, an emotion. It doesn't mean the kind of happiness that sometimes we think of initially. Instead, it has more a sense of blessedness, happy or content or satisfied. Blessed is another way of expressing it. And the counsel of the first couple of verses here is that if you follow the advice of the wicked, if you take the path of sinners, if you sit with scoffers who don't believe, well, then you won't be happy. You won't be blessed. You won't be content. But instead, those who are blessed find their delight in the law of the Lord, and they meditate upon that law day and night. Law here is not a list of prescriptions and proscriptions. Uh, law sometimes for us is a negative term, but here in the Hebrew Scriptures, the law of the Lord, well, that simply means God's instruction to us, uh, God's word that comes to us and offers us the wisdom and the hope and the grace that we need to be sustained through all that comes in life. We meditate on what God has said to us what has been written down and passed on. We meditate upon God who speaks through Scripture and speaks in the quiet of our own hearts. The psalmist says that for those who meditate on the law of the Lord, day and night, they will be like trees planted by streams of water, which means they'll be healthy. They will receive everything that they need. A tree that isn't watered quickly dies, but when you're planted by the streams of water and that water comes from God, well, then the trees, the trees grow up to be strong, full of branches. And not only that, they yield their fruit in season, the psalmist says. Their health and their prosperity is something that's shared with the world in the form of the fruit that is given. We can think of the New Testament as it counsels that we as disciples are to bear fruit in the world. There's supposed to be signs that we are indeed given the grace of God, and so we share the love of God. The psalmist pronounces that those who meditate upon God's law, who make God's word the center of their lives so that they never get unhooked from that stream of water, well, in all that they do, they will prosper. Prosperity is a funny word in our culture because we usually think about it in solely economic terms. You're prosperous if you have a lot of money in the bank and a big retirement account. You're prosperous based on the size of your house and the number of cars that will fit in your garages. But that's not what scripture means. To prosper, well, that's to have reflected in your life the abundance of God. Prospering in Old Testament terms, in New Testament terms, is to live the blessed life that God intends for us, full of love, full of wisdom, full of grace, full of family at the table, full of the daily bread that God promises us. Prosperity is not about being rich. It's about sharing in the abundance of God. The psalmist then counsels that the wicked, well, it's not so for them. They don't prosper, and they aren't planted by streams of water. Now, you might think by looking around the world that it seems like the wicked are doing pretty well. 
that those who do evil, those who, um, who traffic in injustice and oppression, well, they seem to be doing pretty well. But the psalmist has the long view in mind here. That will not always be so. The wicked will not stand in the judgment, the psalmist says. Now, this isn't the second coming judgment, the final judgment. This is the judgment that happens as the consequences of our evil actions, the consequences of our broken relationships, which lie like litter in our wake. The consequences of a life that is lived unrighteously and not according to God's word, well, they catch up to us. The one who is too full of themselves will have a fall. The one who is sure that they can get away with everything will ultimately be caught. And that's not so for those who meditate upon the righteousness of God. They will stay away from those consequences. The psalmist concludes by saying, The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow, but in God's time, wickedness and evil and suffering and hate, these will go away, and the righteous will stand happy and blessed in the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, in your loving wisdom, you set us beside the fountain of life like a tree planted by running streams. Fill us with delight in your teaching that we may bear fruit in every season of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.